Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus Rampage 4 Extreme Black Edition. Now I've got it out on the side here, I've got it on a stand, which is a little bit of a hint about what we've got coming up in a minute anyway. Uh, but obviously uh, a lot of people uh, have been really waiting for the Rampage Black. It's been a long time since we've had some 2011 um, products on the channel, but in general really, I know we've had the, like, the CPUs, but it's been a long time since we've had a new board. Now there was originally thought that this was just going to be a kind of, just a, a Rampage with black slots on it, but I, so much has changed with this board. It's unreal, um, it, and it, it, they do look similar, but electrically they're completely different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the, the original Rampage in, and we'll stick them side by side and have a good look. I'll show you around the BIOS and stuff. The thing I can't stress enough is go and have a look in the uh, the re review link wherever it ends up, because I can never remember. I think it's this side. Go and have a look uh, to see it in the grass with all the other stuff. I will show you the test rig that we use. It's a little bit ghetto with this, but it's because things have been getting moved around all over the place, and I'm trying to do so many things at once. But the the actual you know the way we test it doesn't, or that how we test it doesn't really matter that much in a in a looks point of view. But then we'll go through, we'll have a look at the BIOS, we'll have a look at the rig, then we'll have a good uh, chit chat at the end about uh, my personal thoughts about the board um, and my experiences with it, my thoughts on it, and then you can obviously link, look at both of the versions, so you can look at the review and you can look at the, my thoughts in the video and everything like that. So without further ado, I'm going to be quiet, I'm going to bring you in for a good look at this, we'll talk about specs, I do actually have notes here. Uh, um, to do the next section because they have changed quite a lot and there's lots of little bits and bobs that I need to talk about uh, but yeah I'm just going to be quiet and crack on because I know you want to have a look at this. Okay then peeps so I thought I would take this opportunity to point out how quite radically different the um, Rampage Black is compared to the original Rampage 4 Extreme because a lot of people thought it was just going to be a colour change. And I have to admit, I thought it was too. Now, just to confuse matters, Asus did leak pictures of a black rampage that looked exactly like this. Uh, it literally was just the slots that you would see here, these grey slots on this board, uh, and it got put out as a rampage black extreme. I'm actually going to move the the board up to hide the Asus logos now, just so that we can get a better, a better view of everything. So there, there was those photos leaked originally, and that's kind of what people were expecting, but then when this appeared, people then did just think that we had some slightly different heat sinks, um, and that was, that was gonna be the end of matters. But to be fair, there's a massive, massive amount that they've changed. Um, the CPU's now got uh, eight phase for the CPU core, uh, power delivery wise. They've got the 60 amp gold treated chokes on them. Now I've actually got some notes, so don't mind admitting it this time, because there's a lot. You've got the 60 amp gold treated chokes. And uh, if you have a look underneath here, you can see there's a, a run of them. Strangely, uh, the end two don't have the thermal pad on them for the heat sink but then there's uh, more MOSFETs and stuff all underneath this section of the heatsink as well. Because on the, oh, flipping heck, on the original Rampage, this actually doesn't do anything. It's not really attached to anything. It's just there to kind of cover stuff up. But this one does get significantly warm, although I've not taken it off. It has got contact points on it that I can see. Uh, but this does get uh, warm to the touch and, and so does this. This one doesn't get too bad to be fair. Another difference is this is uh, just a heat sink with a metal top on it. This one actually lights up. It's one of the few bits of uh, red that you do get in the, uh, case, in the case on the board. But you do have also the LED trail down around the Supreme FX down this side that you've uh, you might have seen on some of the Z87 boards and they say a lot about the um, Supreme FX as well and I do mean they say a lot of it uh, Supreme FX shielding around that there's um, premium uh, ELNA premium audio capacitors 
There's a, a TI N5532 OP amp and dual TI LM4562 OMP amps to form two separate differential outputs. There's a front audio DAC, uh, apparently that's a Cirrus Logic CS4398. There's Weimer uh, WIMA film caps, high fidelity headphone amp TI TPA61. 2 a 2 uh, They've got this weird thing now where they've got a Sonic Radar software package and apparently that um, uh, it's uh, like a, there's a radar overlay which means you can uh, translate the in-game multi-channel audio into a radar graph to help gamers spot potential threats. Um, obviously me not being very much of a FPS gamer or stuff like that uh, it sounds good to me but you guys are going to have to tell me if you ever get to use this whether it is any you know chance you know if it is any good there's a sound enhancer so that you can uh, enhance gunshots and footsteps um, and all kinds of different things uh, in games and stuff like that so I spent a lot of time on the audio with this. Now with the ramp, the original Rampage, it wasn't bad audio by any stretch of the imagination, but it was just onboard audio. I've got one of these in Orca and I run a Zonar D2X in it, although I have got a, um, an Essence STX waiting to go in when I do the coolant. Um, because I've always been uh, pretty keen on uh, the, where I use it as a uh, workstation, I've always been pretty keen on you know my music and stuff like that. Now I did test this, and although I will say a dedicated sound card will always be better than what little they put on here, for onboard audio, this was pretty damn good. If this was going in TNR, for example, my racing rig, I wouldn't think twice about running this. I would say the only real step up if you buy this, if you want to step up from this section of the onboard audio, then the only real kind of step up from it would be a proper quality um, dedicated graphics card so like a PCI Express Sonar, the STX if you're into your music or something like the D2X if you're in music and films or even the Phoebus if you're really mega hardcore into your games and want a sound card for that but for the average kind of user that's never going to notice the difference between this and a, and, a, and a dedicated I would go as far as to say you probably are going to be better off just getting this set up and and running it and kind of forgetting about it really uh if we go back to um the difference between the board power wise because i kind of skipped over it and i shouldn't have done just to read you out some of the stuff they've got um 100 10k black metallic caps it's got a uh, uh, next fit power block for the MOS mosfets two times the current capability of any low rds on mosfets while capable of greater than of capable of greater than 90% um, efficiency at 15 amps. Sorry, I'm trying to read this, but the uh, the reviewer's guide is Chinglish, and it's very Chinese English, and it's yeah not very well laid out really. Um, the gold chokes that I showed you at the top there, they're capable of um, 60 amps, and they're obviously gold coated. The uh, you've got sub zero cents down. Where is it? Here where you've got um, 2K type probe digital thermometers and they're capable of uh, minus 200 to plus 200 degrees. There's loads of uh, hardcore um, overclocking bits on this like a, a slow mode, an LN2 mode, there's VGA hot wire. Something I do find quite strange is they're saying on uh, this that there's four more fan headers because they're fucking everywhere. There's one ear, there's one ear. I'm just scanning around to have a look. There's one there, there's one there, one there, one there, one there. Is there one down near the socket somewhere? Yeah, there's another one down here. Now, they say that's for overclockers. Now, I have to admit, most of the overclockers that I know, especially hardcore overclockers, we're wiring their fans into the Molex and just smashing them on 12 volts. Uh, if you've got a massive case as well and you've bought this, I very much doubt many of you are going to be using very many of these onboard headers and you're probably either going to have a fan controller or you're going to um, set them up static like I do because I set my rig up so it's silent and then just forget about it with fan speed reducers and stuff and it certainly helps me uh, keep things cool and quiet. 
But anyway, back to the differences. Uh, heat sinks, if you have a look at what I still call the South Bridge, but it's technically the chipset heat sink now, you've got uh, this one's active. Uh, and when this first came out, one of the things I actually said about it that I hated was this fan. And later on in a BIOS update, they gave us the ability to turn it on and off and be able to spin it down and stuff. I've always run this off. Uh, I never actually have that on at all. Uh, and something that I have noticed with this one, strangely, is this one, to the touch, has got a lot warmer than I've ever noticed this one uh, has got. It's not um, hot to the stage of the old 775 days when we had like P35 and X38 North Bridges that were getting really warm. Um, but it, it does, to the touch, you can feel that there's a bit of warmth there. But don't forget, I've been benching this on a box. And there's not been a massive amount of airflow. As soon as you put a fan on it or near it, it then practically goes cold. But it's just been something that I've noted, so, noticed, so I'm telling you. Um, we've got the uh, PCI poster at the top. This, for an overclocking board, is almost um, invaluable because you can uh, always tell uh what the if it if you get a freeze on post it will tell you but that's you know in the same place on the other side start and reset buttons we can turn the pcr express lanes off again brilliant for um uh blah, 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 blah. brilliant for multiple graphics if one dies but one thing i will say is people are going to be wanting to know about uh, motherboard water blocks now one of the best places that you can kind of look and see a stark difference is uh uh here around the kind of uh, gap between the memory, the heatsink, and the end of the PCI Express. This area is very, very different. And the motherboard water blocks generally go over this area. Um, and then there's loads of other points where, if we have a look down here, the heatsink comes down a lot further near the bottom of the motherboard. And on this one, there's a lot more caps. So I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna be bold and say that they're definitely not going to be capable because they are electrically completely different so I'm kind of hoping that the manufacturers get their arse in gear and get us some uh, heat sinks sorted out sooner rather than later because I'd really like to see this uh, with the boards on but at the same time with the boards on with the blocks on but at the same time I would say that it would almost be a shame to get rid of this kind of uh, bit of the back I this kind of chunky real bulky um, design on the left hand side over the IO and everything I think looks brilliant and it actually does clean the look up lots more but something I do want to do I'm just going to grab some memory sticks quickly because something that's come up on the forum loads and it's come up in the Asus um, it's come up on the Asus PDF is the memory because when the Rampage first came out there was of people having trouble getting the memory to run and essentially it's quite e it's easier for me to show you on the on the red rampage but essentially you put your memory in the red slots first now i always if you look on this side i always on like a z87 board or whatever i always use the outside two red ones i don't use the inside ones i always use those ones and with the uh um x79s what you should do if you're going to run dual channel you should run the two inside red ones first so on this board it would be the gray slots now if you if you're fault finding and you need to test a single stick the only place a single stick will work is this slot here so i'm just going to fit that quickly right so that is the only place a single slot will work the next slot that you put in after that should be getting the right way around this one and this on a x79 board is how you run dual channel so it's uh, that slot first and then this slot and then uh, if you're going to go quad channel then you run into the uh, the two outside red ones which as you'll see they're right on the very outside on the uh, rampage black they're grey there we go, there we go, right so we've got the memory fitted onto the Rampage Black there, then if you were to go onto, and I just, I do need to double check this because it's, I've got a graphic that I'm going to put up on the screen for it, yeah I did have it right, 
If you're then going to go, say for argument's sake, you want to stick another two sticks in, you then f go onto the inside black ones. And then if you want to put a um, outside, uh, go onto your fourth channel, you've only got one more left, and you put that on that one. Now, the only thing I've just realised is I do have a graphic for this, uh, but it's going to be quite large on the screen, so I might have to put it down here somewhere. But anyway, <clears throat> that was just something um, I did want to bring up because it does seem to have confused, uh, caused a lot of confusion in the past. So just to reiterate, single channel testing, so if you want to take your fault finding or something, that is the stick you fit first. If you're going to run dual channel, it's those two, so it'll be the two red ones. If you, then when you go quad channel, again, you go into the red ones, you uh, ignore the black ones until you start filling up the slots. And while we're talking about filling up the slots, uh, something that I will say is uh, you, it's got um, XMP 1.3 enabled. Uh, so it means that you can have 64 gigabyte of RAM if you want to fill them up. So obviously I've got 32 here at the moment. If you were to fill the rest of these up, you can do that. And there's XMP uh, configurations available for you to do it and it will just sort it out. Another thing is uh, it's PCI Express 3, whereas this one was as well, but you do need the 4 series 2011. So 4960X, 4930K, 4 mm, whatever it is, 20. Uh, and it's 16 times there, 8 times there, 16 times there, 8 times there. 2 will run at 16. If you run uh, 3 cards, it's 16, 8, 16. If you go 4 cards, it's 16, 8, 8, 8. So that's your split down there. There's lots of other buttons and switches on it. There's a BIOS switch there. There's a direct key button. There's a MemGo button somewhere as well. Uh, Memo K button up there. There's loads of stuff on this board. Um, but like I said, I just wanted to stick them side by side. Just to point out more differences, you can see we've got BIOS chips down here on the bottom. BIOS chips on this board are up to the right hand side. Uh, you can actually see that the, um, uh, I was going to say the memory slots were slightly lower, and, but they're not. It's just the angle that I'm looking at. But it is very uh, different. I mean, you can look up here at the voltage things. They're, on, they're just touch pins on this one. You've not actually got the connectors. Um, I could be here all day, and I've just realised that this segment of the video has been 15 minutes in itself. So that's our good look at the two boards side by side, the original Rampage and now the new Rampage Black. Hopefully, if you've blown this up into 1080p and had a really close look at it, you'll see that it, they are just, they look similar and they do carry the same name, but they're very, very different boards entirely. So, right, I'm going to love, 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 love you and leave you. And we're now going to move swiftly on. Right then guys, so a look at the rig, and yes it is very ghetto, but this was just the quickest way I could chuck things together to show you after having the boards side by side out, because obviously I have to have the boards out that I can show you, and then I have to show you it working, and it, to cut a long story short, it's um, I, I've actually got the red rampage in the case where this would have been for the video. So I'm just trying to um, um, stop me having to keep, you know, rebuilding rigs and all the time because it just it gets it's never ending otherwise so essentially rig today slightly differs from what we would have done with 2011 rigs before whereas we've got the 4960x in this now obviously it's a, a new chip and i'm not going to say that the rampage black was designed for it but it's a newer board and then they probably would have been using the newer chips with the newer chips in mind uh, we do know that they've kind of, uh, they say, uh, opened up bandwidth for the memory so that you can get 2800 megahertz and 3000 um, megahertz uh, if your CPU is able to do it. So we thought we'd use the new CPU to be able to test this factor out. We did use the 496X on the old Rampage so that we've got something we can directly compare to, but also the clocks that we got the... Um, 4960X2 on the old Rampage was the, the, literally the scores were almost identical to the, four, the 3960X. So everything can go in the graph and it doesn't, you know, confuse matters too much. But we've got the good old faithful 7970 Club 3D Royal Ace on there again because we've used it on all the other boards. We've got a 
32 gigabyte of Corsair Vengeance Pro, 2400 megahertz. Those are eight gigabyte sticks you see. Then we've got an AX1200. The individual cables, yes, I know they don't match, but it was just a PSU that I've had that I could use to hand really easily because the AX1200i with the red cables is on the red rampage. Then we've got H100i taking care of the cooling. SP120 Performance Edition fans are actually on 12 volts as well. And that was just because of um, trying to keep temps low when I really was pushing the overclocks. The only thing I ha would have done or have done differently compared to the way this looks when I was doing my benchmarks, I had a, a SP120 fan just blowing over the MOSFET heat sinks and around the kind of CPU socket area, not blowing a tornado or anything, but just to simulate the airflow that would have been lost in uh, an actively cooled case. So other than that, that is the test rig that we're going to be uh, working on looking at today. But what I'm going to do now is uh, break off and I will, I will take you to and show you round the BIOS. Right then boys and girls, first thing that you will notice is I need to uh, do the optimised defaults thing. Really to make, take away all of these settings. Right, so first things first that you will notice is uh, to go along with the motherboard, the BIOS is now all black. That was actually quite a surprise to me when I first logged into this. Um, it's the first kind of really, really dark one like this I've ever seen and I have to admit, I quite like it. Beyond that, it's pretty uh, similar to everything that we've been used to previously with Asus BIOSes. Um, all of these things at the top you obviously can use. I tend to just get down to the AI tuner, bang it on manual, and then pretty much do everything myself though. Um, we've obviously got the turbo thing that you can set, so if you want to do it, you can you know you can set that. DRAM frequency again, you can change all of those, but also if you want, you can change the CPU strap, and that then enable and that then brings you different DRAM straps as well. Um, Digi power control, you've got your load line calibration for your CPU there, CPU current, CPU voltage frequency, power duty control. One thing I will say though is uh, one thing I've learnt with this BIOS, whereas with the Rampage I was very used to just going in and going, because I've been using the Rampage for a long time, very very used to just going in there, sticking the settings in that I was used to and then uh, it just working. Just because I've used it that much, I, I, I know exactly what I'm doing. Now, uh, most users of the Rampage Black aren't going to have gone from a Rampage 4 original red one onto the black one. But I would say work through your BIOS uh, in stages. Uh, because there were several things in this um, section specifically that I was used to change on the red one that uh, I would say that you don't need to touch stroke. It will make things unstable if you change on this one. Uh, this current capability one, for example, uh, I did find personally, I don't know whether it's a BIOS problem or whether it's just something you don't really need to touch. I was always used to with the other board having to run sort of like a 120 to a 130 uh, to be able to sustain very high overclocks and you know be able to keep things nice and stable. With this, I've actually found that you, with um, this board rather, you're more than likely by touching this, you're actually going to start making things unstable. But obviously I've only tested it with a 4960X, so when you start overclocking it yourself, if you do buy this board, just the why I say do things in stages is because if you boot up and your system's stable and you know it's stable, then you change one thing in the BIOS, whether it's this or something else, and then suddenly it's unstable, you realize you've got a problem. So it's just that classic thing that I always tell people when you're starting afresh, do it in stages. Obviously, I've been used to not having to do things in stages because I've been using the boards for so long. But obviously, if you buy a new board, please, you know, start up and do it in stages. Uh, so we said about the T-Probe, uh, you can change that to extreme as well. It's power cycle. Uh, then you've also got CPU power phase. Um, something new is the CPU inrush inertia and it says enabling helps reduce inrush current at the expense of slightly lower voltage under load. So basically en enabling it reduces the inrush current but it will um, make the V-droop slightly worse. I don't know whether then you can uh, make up for that with the load line calibration or not. But then you've also got the VCC SA load line calibration. 
Uh, that's like the system agent voltage on the Z87. CPU VTT, uh, you've also got a um, overcurrent protection and a switching frequency. If you put it on 1.3, it makes the uh, power a lot cleaner that goes to the VTT. Um, uh, PCI, uh, PCH, sorry, switching frequency. Again, you can flick it up to 1.3 times for cleaner power. CPU performance settings. But also with this one, you've got the speed step, which I always turn off anyway. But there is another section for the CPU over here where you can go down. And the CPU power management at the bottom is the one that we were just on uh, before. Um, but you also get the CPU C states that you can enable or disable as well. So it's kind of confusing that there are bits uh, in different places. Because if you have a look there, performance settings, uh, you've not got the C states in here you have so it's it, it's kind of it, it that side of things does feel like it's a bit all over the place then you go down into your voltages there's nothing uh, unusual there you've got your v-core voltage your vtt voltage this can all be linked into your uh, memory speeds oh bloody hell sorry linked into your memory speeds the vccsa system agent voltage again heavily linked into uh, your um your DRAM and your base clock overclock speeds. DRAM RAM voltages more than likely going to be 1.5, 1.65 volts. CPU PLL, PCH is the chipset. Um, if you're running high overclocks and then trying to do 3D um, stuff, you probably find that increasing this will help your 3Ds a little bit. You can also see where all my voltages were from before, but I'm not going to change it. But anyway, um, yes. So. We will uh, leave the BIOS now. Actually, no, we won't. If you, uh, if you keep scrolling over to the right, you get to boot. If you click over one more time, you get to Asus Overclocking Profile, and that's where you can save your profiles. Now, I've obviously got different ones down here that I've um, saved as I've you know, been working through the review and you know, getting different stages. And This was my first 4.6, and then this was my kind of like filtered kind of perfect um, 4.6 and I, I generally do work through things like that. I normally have a stock one as well I didn't do on this one. You've got BIOS flashback, uh, ro uh, the ROG overclock panel um, configure. I, I've not even bothered looking at that and I'm not going to bother. Something new in here, ROG SSD secure arrays. I've not seen that on the RAM pages before. Uh, easy flash utility, that's just so you can flash your BIOS. Um, and then the rest of it is just kind of normal biosy type stuff. Uh, where's the do to do? Right, we need to, there we go. Uh, in the normal advanced, you've obviously got all the things that you can set on the board. So like in the SATA, you can go in there and change your um, AHCI to RAID, and you can turn things on and off on the board if you don't want them there, don't want them, you know, kind of running. Just the normal kind of, uh, the only other thing actually I will show is the ROG effects where you can change the um, animated animation, that's up here, you can turn that off, which, right, okay, and then the supreme FX lighting on the board as I've shown you that it, it lights up red, you can uh, enable or disable that as well. Right, I'm going to sh shush my mouth, oh I kicked the camera, I'm going to shush my mouth, let's move swiftly on. Okay then, so we're moving on to the conclusion and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to tell you the award and then I'll, what I'll do is we'll talk through everything and my thoughts about this uh, as we move on. Now I'm going to give it the gold award. Now I think we gave the original, the uh, performance award because it was um, uh, at that point in time for a motherboard it was still a really expensive board but the problem is is all the other manufacturers have kind of moved up into this uh, price bracket as well and there's a lot of uh, expensive 2011 boards there's, a, there's some really expensive uh, Z87 boards when you think about it prices I'm seeing in the UK are 399 uh, so nearly 400 pounds but like I said there's some Z87 boards out there that cost this much uh, in some cases more which I think is completely bonkers <clears throat> now the reason why I've gone from 
performance to gold is loosely based on my experiences with the original Rampage. I've been using uh, these boards since they first come out. That red one there that you saw in the video is the original review sample that I got sent uh, at launch. I'm still using it and all it ever does is get um, just overclocked and raped and abused all the time. I, and to kind of add even more weight to my thoughts about this board, I've got a, a, a Rampage in Orca. I think it was the Battlefield 3 version that I got sent. It was just a game version anyway. It was no difference to the board. So I've got two in the office that get used, I don't want to say daily because that would be exaggerating, but one of, well, Orca gets used daily, but that one, at least once a week, that's got something hanging off of it that I'm trying to kill. Uh, now, the problem is, really, for Asus, is I hold this board in quite high regard. I actually say that the original Rampage 4 Extreme is the best 2011 board that was ever made. Um, and that goes for all of them, absolutely all of them. I don't care what manufacturer or board, and you start talking about waste of silicons like the SRX and stuff like that. It, it, really, the, the Rampage 4 Extreme is the best 2011 board, I think, that there is. Um, it's obviously the one that I've spent the most amount of time with, but it's probably out of all of the boards I've ever used, it's also the one that's never let me down. There was a point where I thought I'd broken a memory slot on that once, because to be fair, I would um, i can't remember, I, I'm, I, I wasn't concentrating basically, and I, honestly the whole thing cracked everything, and I was like, no! didn't have a problem with it. It's it's just, I know I was lucky, but it's just one of those boards that's stayed consistent. Our graphs have always stayed consistent. The CPU in it, it's never kind of raked out. And I've had, I've had other boards by other manufacturers that have ended up, you know, because of the stress that they get put under, either the board dying, and when the board dies, it takes CPUs with them, risks graphic cards going, I've had hard drives go. And it's all been generally loosely based around the, the motherboard going pop. Now a lot of people say that could be your CPU, uh, your power supply, Tom. But I've had, I always use a proper quality power supply. I never stick with any shit or anything like that. I always use something that I know is going to be okay. To the point where when stuff has gone wrong, then using um, uh, the same power supply again and you don't get any problems. Just kind of, there are ways that you can tell that it's not. But anyway, so the the Rampage Extreme to me was way up there. So then bringing a new board out, which then does turn out to be a new board and not just a recolor, it really kind of sets the bar really high already. That's the kind of point I'm trying to get to. So the fact that I've gone from the performance to gold kind of should show you the, where I'm heading with this. Essentially what Aces have done is all of the overclocking and everything that I've done with this board is pretty much par for par with what the original Rampage did. Um, with the 4960X uh, I did, I wanted to use the newer CPU just to try and get a, a good feel for it. And it was churning out the exact same score. Once I got the overclock and everything in place, it was churning out the same scores that the original Rampage did. Just almost identical. You wouldn't really have known the difference if you'd looked at them. Um, the, there was some that you know were marginally better, but we'd probably go as far as to say as where that was a, this was on a fresh install. And that was on an install from a few months back. We did probably go as far to say as, you know, the slight increases were probably due to drivers. Um, but something I will say is, uh, and this is from a personal point of view that I can't really substantiate other than any more than a gut feeling, is that even though the scores were very similar and, you know, this one was ever so slightly marginally ahead, I will still say that I think this BIOS is still a little bit immature. There's certain things about it that are making me think that, you know, with changes, it will get better. More so beyond that is because the original Rampage is so mature BIOS wise and there, there are, have been massive, massive changes with it that um, this is just really started, is an infant and it's just starting its BIOS journey and I hope Asus do keep trying to, you know, tweak and modify and perfect it. Uh, and I think within a couple of BIOS generations that this thing will just, it will be almost in that respect faultless. There was that weird kind of um, power thing that I said about in the BIOS, which I've still not been able to get my head around. 
but if I play with that, it just becomes the most unstable monster in the world. Whereas the other at Rampage, it practically relies on it. So I don't know whether that's because of the electrical changes and that's just a characteristic between the two boards, um, or whether that's really down to, like I said, uh, maybe an, um, uh, an uh, not an, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, please, um, an immature BIOS. But the thing is, is when you don't touch it, it still goes as well as that. So maybe when you can play with it, it will be better than that. We don't really know. Now, one thing I will say is if you are buying this board for the first time, you won't notice any of these changes at all. It's just where literally that red Rampage is almost a member of the family. I've used it that much and spent that much time with it. I could practically tell when that thing's got a sniffle and something's not quite right that you kind of like tune in and you're straight in wondering what's going on. And that's where I've been um, going with this is because I'm so used to the way that one works. This one, especially with that power thing, completely threw me for probably a day and a half, not being able to work out what the problems were. To the point, that power thing, I will be completely honest, I had the whole rig in bits, which is why it was out. I changed the CPU, I changed the memory, I changed the graphics card, I ended up putting a different solid state drive on, fresh install, all to then find out that it was that one thing in the BIOS, which I, and, and it was my own fault, and I don't mind admitting it, because it's all a kind of learning process, I was treating this too much like the old one, rather than going through the stages like I should have done. So it, it was my own fault, and it just solidifies the fact that I've always said, do your overclocking in stages. Um, but the long and short of it is, what Asus have basically done is they've taken the original Rampage and that, yes, they've made it electrically different, so we've got better power circuitry, we've got much, much better audio, uh, and, they've, and the looks as well. I think this one does look a much more sleek and kind of chunky, bulky, kind of like butch motherboard than the original one. It, it, it's got a much better air of quality on this. So essentially what they've done is they've taken the performance of the other board and then they've given everything a bit of a polish. They've kind of refined it, if that makes any sense. They've not made any massive leaps in performance. They've not made, we can't really test longevity, but technically things should last longer with all these new power phases and thing, you know, and, and better power delivery and stuff that's you know, more efficient and all that kind of stuff. So all of that is definitely ticking the right boxes. But essentially, they've just taken what was uh, just a balls out raw board in the past, although it works fucking faultlessly, and they've just added a bit of spit and polish and a bit of shine to it. And that's the reason why I've gone gold rather than performance. There are other boards out there that cost this much, if not more, um, and it's got the, the kind of, the I don't want to say, maybe, yeah, the heritage, the, the Rampage 4. If I was to review that now, I would give it a gold award, and that's why I've swung this way with this one. Um, also, with the new 4, not the 4 series 2011 boards, uh, CPUs, you should get at least 2400 megahertz out of them. Um, I struggle to get much more on this. I still, I couldn't get 2666 on that board. I couldn't get 2666 on this board. Uh, that's more than likely down to my CPU rather than anything else because I tried fucking everything to get it to go, including some crazy um, VC, VCCSA volts and VTT volts. I really did push this CPU hard and it, it, it's just not in it basically. And this is another thing that you do need to kind of keep in mind that the, the board is fully ready for 2666 and 2800 overclocks. And I've heard of people getting over 3000 megahertz at home with just decent cooling as well. But it's all down to A, your ability to know what to change in the BIOS, but more importantly than anything else, is winning the silicon lottery. Now, although my 4960X will do 2400 without breaking a sweat and I can tune all the timings and all that kind of shit down to within an inch of their lives, it's not that, the memory controller on that is has just not got any more than 2550 megahertz in it. And that's the most I've managed to eke out of it. And that was with a 2400 base and then playing with the, um, the base clock to move up with. Uh, talking about base clock, it will do the same as that chip did on that. It's 140 megahertz, uh, and that's obviously a huge difference, but I had to drop the multiplier right down just so I was just playing with the megahertz. And exactly the same uh, usable overclock as well, which I ended up using uh, 46 multiplier, 100 base, 2400 megahertz on the memory. 
uh, the, the volts were, um, uh, were high for one of these 496s, which was 1.44. But that's, uh, that was what this CPU requires to hold that kind of clock. Um, so it's just, it's, you know, it's, it, it sounds high, but that's just what these CPUs are wanting. They, they are more, a lot more power hungry than the, the Haswells. I mean, if you put 1.4 volt through your Haswell, it'd probably bloody melt through your desk. Um, but anyway, so the long and short of it is, the reason why we did give it that gold award over the performance that we gave the last one, is it's just a, a polished and refined, better looking version of the original board. And the, the overlying feeling I've got, and I, 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 the only way I can explain this, is the board is just over there, just out of shot. And it almost feels like it's staring me in the face crying because I'm sat here talking with my new girlfriend. It has made me feel like I'm cheating on the original Rampage. It's, it's a very, very strange feeling to have that about a motherboard, but that's kind of how attached I've become of that red one, to the point where I still think I'm probably gonna end up keep using that, because uh, I wanna see what uh, water blocks and stuff eventually get released for this one, and you know whether it makes any difference and how good they're gonna end up looking. But yeah, awesome, awesome motherboard. And to be fair, this is what Asus should all be about. Now, I do need to nail it in at the end, and I know the Asus rep's going to go a little bit crackers about me saying it, but it did come with the overclock key. Please, for the love of God, I mean, if you really like those type of things on your desk and stuff, then brilliant. But I've not even bothered to get the one out of the box on this. I think they made too many for the Maxima 6 Extreme. They've not sold enough Maxima 6 Extremes, and they've kind of decided, because they bought a job lot of them, that they're going to try and sell them with this. Uh, it, that thing, I just, I hate it. And it, one of the most stupid things about it is the cable, even though I said about it before, still isn't long enough. You can't hide it in a decent sized case very well. You practically need to go, you know, in the, in, in the main chamber of your case, it needs to kind of go out and then straight up to the optical bay if you're gonna run it inside, which is pointless. It should be able to be hidden and long enough that you can run it up the back of the case and out the way to keep things tidy. Or, uh, if you want to run it outside your case, it's still not very long either. And the, the problem is, is it's just those people in China or wherever that design these things. They're obviously not full-on enthusiasts, because if they were a proper enthusiast that built their own rigs and wanted things like we do to be nice and tidy and look nice and all that kind of stuff over just functionality, then they would have made that cable at least 30 centimetres longer. Um, and it's just it, th those kind of little details really kind of rub me up the wrong way. So I'm just going to say that the, the overclock key, leave it in the box, sell it on eBay, use it as a coaster. Um, I could not have that thing in my rig ever. It, 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 uh, yes, just no. Um, but again, that's completely down to you. This is just my personal opinion. I think Asus have kind of, it's let down by the cable, let alone the fact that it's just, yeah. We just won't even go there. Anyway, so with that right at the very end, we'll hope that the Asus rep doesn't watch right to the very end, because uh, it will be straight on Skype going, hey, Tom, why did you bring that up again? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the, the overclock key is the only negative thing uh, I've got. Oh, no, it's not the overclock key, it's the overclock panel, isn't it? The OC panel, I think they're called. Yeah, OC panel. That's the only negative thing I've got to say about this board at all so yeah it's just let down by one of the things that are bundled in it oh and the other good thing i don't know whether you watch the original things it does come with the most amazing case badge which i took pictures and put it on the uh tiny tom logan facebook page it's actually still on the side of orca that says a lot because uh, i hate case badges absolutely positively 124 percent hate case badges and yet that one it's done funny things to me Anyway, so I'm going to love you and leave you. I am going to tie this video up here now, right straight away. I'm going to say congratulations to Asus. You went from a performance award to a gold award, as very few products have ever managed to do that. Um, but for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the gold award winning Asus Rampage 4 Black Edition out. Ding!